A three-year-old article on the origin of COVID-19 has led to United States' longest discussion ever that has taken in the halls of the U.S. Congress. Two scientists, evolutionary biologist Christian Anderson of Scripps Research and virologist Robert Gary, who are co-authors of the article, are facing subcommittee hearing over the article published in the Nature Medicine magazine in March 2020. The paper argued that SARS-CoV-2 had most likely evolved naturally rather than being engineered by the scientists. Meanwhile, the hearing held by the House Select Subcommittee on the coronavirus pandemic focused largely on two scientists as witnesses over a short period of time went from thinking the virus appeared lab made to ruling out the hypothesis. The NIH covered up scenario pushed by Republicans continued to irk the House as the discussion over the pandemic origin continues. However, if the hearing will help in preparing for a future public health crisis, that remains to be seen. You guys don't know whether they were doing gain-of-function research or not. You think they weren't. I think they were. You think they weren't. But regardless of that, what they were doing there, what the, the, the biosafety level at that lab wasn't up to the code it should have been for the research they were doing. Uh, doing this type of research at BSL-2 using bat coronaviruses is commonly done at BSL-2. The lab work, or the animal work, I should say, is done in BSL-3. Again, this is all what available. What level lab would the... you want? If you're doing the research, Dr. Anderson or Dr. Gary, what level lab, uh, what, what level would you want, two or three? This would, again, typically be, con this would typically be approved at biosafety level two. However, as I said from the beginning, is that I believe, especially given everything we know, based on how many of these coronaviruses we have, that this kind of work should, in future, via international regulations, be done at BSL-3. Should be done at a higher level than it was done there. Correct. what you're saying. Got it. You, don't, you guys don't know whether they were doing gain-of-function research or not. You think they weren't. I think they were. You think they weren't. But regardless of that, what they were doing there, what the, the, the biosafety level at that lab wasn't up to the code it should have been for the research they were doing. Uh, doing this type of research at BSL-2 using bat coronaviruses is commonly done at BSL-2. The lab work, or the animal work, I should say, is done in BSL-3. Again, this is all what available. What level lab would the... you want? If you're doing the research, Dr. Anderson or Dr. Gary, what level lab, uh, what, what level would you want, two or three? This would, again, typically be, con this would typically be approved at biosafety level two. However, as I said from the beginning, is that I believe, especially given everything we know, based on how many of these coronaviruses we have, that this kind of work should, in future, via international regulations, be done at BSL-3. Should be done at a higher level than it was done there. Correct. what you're saying. Got it. You, don't, you guys don't know whether they were doing gain-of-function research or not. You think they weren't. I think they were. You think they weren't. But regardless of that, what they were doing there, what the, the, the biosafety level at that lab wasn't up to the code it should have been for the research they were doing. Mm, that was the word coming in from the U.S. Congress where that discussion of sorts happened, one of the longest ones that we've seen. Abhishek Jha with us on the broadcast. He continues to tell us the stories coming from across the world. Abhishek. Will we ever know the origins of COVID-19 and what does this long discussion, quote-unquote, at the U.S. Congress really tells us? Uh, so really, it is interesting because, uh, I mean, there is a clear divide between the scientific, uh, scientist community and the political community as well. Two uh, most uh, reliable and, uh, you know, responsible community who could actually throw light whether uh, this whole coronavirus uh, escaped from a laboratory where the scientists were experimenting and they were trying to engineer something else. Uh, or it was just a naturally evolved virus that spread across the world, you know, in the course of two, three years and uh, had all those, you know, impacts and uh, worse impact across the world. Uh, but what is happening in currently U.S. is they are trying to grill uh, the lawmakers. The Republican side is trying to question scientists whether they were doing any research uh, on such uh, viruses and whether those research labs were uh, following the utmost safety standards that an international protocol should have. Uh, and uh, apparently these, these scientists are not in a position to say that the international protocol, which says uh, about a certain level of protocol that should be followed in these highly sensitive uh, virus researches was being followed by the U.S. authorities. Also, there was billions of dollars of money of U.S. taxpayers that was pumped into these researches, which were also happening uh, in collaboration with U.S. Uh, US laboratory uh, in China, apparently from where the COVID, COVID virus had escaped. Uh, the first COVID case was also detected, and uh, China so far has been the first case provider of COVID. So the entire blame has been on, on China, and now the lawmakers are saying that, uh, the Democratic side is saying that uh, Republicans are trying to weaponize this whole theory of evolution 
while Republicans are saying to the Democrats that they are trying to suppress the real uh, issue and the real reason from where this whole COVID pandemic started. So uh, these research, these most in-depth discussions are happening in the U.S. Congress, and we'll uh, get to know some aspect of reality, uh, whether the lab did some irresponsible act or it was just that uh, or the scientist community uh, understands Abhishek, the fact that uh, uh, it was naturally evolved. Wise. As, you, as you narrate all the details to us, I'm just curious because uh, certain sections of politicians in U.S. and even scientists, there's been a backlash against the likes of Dr. Fauci as well, who was seen at the forefront of fighting COVID-19 when U.S. and the entire world was going through that crisis. Could you tell us a bit about that, please? So, I mean, Fauci is an interesting uh, aspect of this whole COVID pandemic. I mean, he was steering uh, COVID, uh, you know, U.S. policies during the time of COVID. He was also heading those sensitive labs uh, for almost three decades, uh, which were believe, which are believed to have been in collaboration with Chinese, uh, you know, virological research institute from where these, uh, these, these viruses have escaped, apparently. This has been the allegations. China has always maintained that there has not been any escape and uh, those uh, viruses that were being engineered uh, were not part of this COVID, uh, you know, COVID family. Uh, so there is no question of any any virus escaping from that. And it was just a naturally transmitted disease that came from animal to human. And the first case was uh, apparently detected in, in, in uh, Wuhan. Uh, but uh, entire, uh, you know, across the world, there has been a political backlash to every incumbent government who was, uh, you know, who was at the power during the time of COVID and the opposition has been trying to, you know, encash a lot of political mileage as well whether uh, their policies were not up to date uh, or they did not see anything of such massive scale coming uh, or, uh, I mean, they, the, the scientist community was not allowed to do entire research project and whether there was some political coercion from the China, Chinese side or the US okay. side. So, I mean, there are a lot of theories, a lot of conspiracy theories also that has evolved during the COVID time also and they are still are uh, trying to play around on social media and various platforms. But, I mean, right. one can only right. hope that the U.S. decision will throw some light on this. Let's hope that happens and we get answers in this lifetime about the origins of COVID-19. 